Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Volume 12 Spiritual Teaching 349 Love Each Other 1. Beloved people, you have believed in my coming at this time. Even in the last days of my communication, you come hurriedly, without fatigue, following my word. Many have been called. To all I have offered the water of this source, and few have listened and understood me. But I have manifested myself and have overflowed love in the universe. 2. In the second era, I told you, Blessed are those who without seeing have believed. And to you at this time I say also, Blessed are you because you have believed and persevered in my work without seeing me. 3. My coming should not surprise you because it was announced, but you did not know the time it was to arrive. After my departure in the second era, my words were printed by my disciples, and they led them to new disciples, to be spread throughout the world, and the promise of my return was for those who followed me closely, an encouragement in the hard struggle, a beautiful hope and sustenance for his insatiable spirit of knowledge. And from generation to generation, my disciples expected to see the new appearance of their master, but behold, the generations, they happened to each other. Multitudes of beings came to incarnate on earth and then return to the hereafter without their eyes to see that promise fulfilled. Centuries passed and even millennia and when the hour was marked and my presence in spirit, a new era opened. I found that men had erased my word from their hearts, and very few were watching, waiting for my new advent. 4. I have come among you in silence, without showing off, but the way in which I have manifested myself has surprised so many. It has been a source of doubt for some, and even mockery for others. Only those who knew how to persevere with his awake spirit and clear mind felt me, as they could feel me in any way that I chose to manifest myself, but the promise was made to all, and its fulfillment is presented to all as well. 5. This is my revelation of this time. Man has been in all times my spokesperson. I have chosen him because he is my son. He is my work, and this is the reason. And even when that son feels unworthy of me, because it has not been perfected, I see beyond those imperfections to that particle of light that is part of my spirit, to the favorite creature being intelligent and capable of transmitting my word. As humans, do you love only your good children? I have watched parents help with more solicitude for sick or lost children in order to free them from their sufferings. In this time, I have chosen to carry out this mission for humble, simple, sinful, and rude men and women, because in them I have found grace and they have known how to purify themselves and rise to carry their position with dignity. 7. Perhaps, could you hear my spiritual voice, perceive and understand the divine language, today that you have materialized so much so that you do not know how to hear or obey the voice of your spirit that is anguished and fainted in that world where you live? 8. That is why I chose the man and endowed him with spiritual virtues so that he could be my spokesperson. And through this communication, 
I have been believed and understood by many, but others have persisted in their disbelief. 9. I have allowed the spirit world to communicate with men in the same way, and I have united those beings in spirit and others in matter. 10. It is necessary that you taste the taste of all the cups of bitterness, that you know of pain and also of peace, so that you know everything and it becomes part of your experience, because I want you to be true disciples of mine, that you teach with deeds rather than with words. The example is stronger than the word, and it is necessary that you send my work to all your brothers and that is the best way to spread it. 11. Work patiently, endure to the end. Let nothing stop you on your way, because there is much pain that you have to alleviate, and much darkness that you will have to dispel. First of all, you must trust your Father, and yourselves, and to know the value of your gifts. 12. In the second era, when the Messiah addressed his word to the crowds that followed him, in a single lesson he spoke to each and every one, and discovered the inner life of those creatures that approached him, and despite the various requests, needs, or intentions, presented to him his word wise, precise, and clear, he went always to console a sorrow, to solve a problem, or to dispel doubts, and even when the unprepared heart of some did not know how to receive that word and interpret its meaning, the spirit, more accessible than the flesh, more sensitive to divine emanations, he accepted those lessons, and after meditating and sustaining a combat with his matter, he ended up believing, because only a superior master the father of infinite goodness, could know the drama that stirred within him and still and comfort his spirit. 13. Many men, seeing the disciples living with the Master, expected to receive the same works from them that the Messiah was doing, and many times they were disappointed to see that they were just little toddlers who were beginning to soar spiritually and struggling to understand the great lessons of their Lord. But the Messiah had not said to the crowds, Hear these disciples. He did not present them as teachers at the time of his preaching. It was the rocks that were being polished to shine later. 14. How many times did the disciples try to separate the children who were approaching the Messiah to hear his word, believing to do well, and thus keep more recollection, without understanding that they also had a place to occupy among the disciples, and when this happened, how much pain the little ones and their mothers felt when they left? 15. The people who followed the Messiah were always attentive in judging his works and those of his disciples. When one of them tried to defend his master using the sword, his act was censored by the crowds. But the Messiah, he continued correcting and preparing his faithful disciples until the day he told them, I leave you in my place so that you do with humanity what I have done with you. 16. All imperfections, errors, ignorance had fallen from them like a useless garment to be clothed with the gifts and power of the one who sent them. They could already represent their master, and even when they were scrutinized severely by the people, they found no reason for censure. How much they had to struggle with themselves to reach the degree of elevation that was necessary to preach the teaching of their Lord. And truly I tell you, his example is indelible. 
how much humility and how much love they poured out on his passage to give testimony of my work, and how fruitful and beneficial his example was to this humanity. Yet, after many centuries, his name and his memory live in the hearts of men, and I bear witness in the third era, an era after his great work, for having known how to testify my truth. 17. Now that I am surrounded once more by disciples and toddlers, as I was in the second era, I prepare in the same way and I recharge you with grace and power. You will remain like them, like sheep among wolves, but do not be intimidated, nor do you find it impossible to carry out a great work and leave an example to humanity. 18. You will go insensibly, entering a virtuous life, and your steps will always lead you to the greatest understanding and development of your mission. You do not know the strength that your example will have and the influence that you will exercise when you are consecrated to your fulfillment. 19. I see in the future of this humanity the works of this humble people be written with luminous characters that makes its way between harshness and harsh tests. 20. How much darkness will your works of love and charity dissipate, and how many altars of fanaticism will fall before the strength of your spirituality? because you will carry my doctrine of peace and love in your eyes, on your lips, in your heart, and in all the powers of your spirit. 21. Now that my word is about to manifest itself in this way, I tell you that the absence of these manifestations are not going to cool your heart and be a cause of distancing between one and the other. Not yet can you fight alone in your fulfillment. You still need to give yourself warmth, life, and strength. I want to look after my departure that you continue your meetings because I will continue to preside over your works and I will come to pour out inspirations about these beloved congregations. I want you to continue searching patiently as now you make my word my new revelations, because the divine light will continue to flow endlessly over all of you. 22. When studying my teaching, flee from all discussion or violence so that you never disturb your mind. That spirituality, which is recollection and elevation, always preside over your meetings. And don't just think about you. Draw to your bosom the sick, the weak or tired in life, those who suffer disappointment in the different cults they practice, those who hunger and thirst for spiritual sustenance, those who are humiliated and defenseless because their cause is not understood. All love and attract, and there in your meetings give them comfort, heal their wounds, help them to pray, and united, all in a single prayer, come to me. Find me as father and as doctor, and that act will be enough for me to pour out the balm and grant you wonders. 23. The more spiritual your meeting, the greater wonders you will see be done. Good analyzers of my teaching will arise among you, and when they are speaking to make their analysis known to you, I will enlighten you, and you will say what will be inspired to you at that time. Moreover, let no one speak out of vanity, lest they deprive themselves of their precious gifts. 24. Just as in these times I have rewarded your preparation, granting you this communication, I want, in those future times, to grant you my grace also for your elevation and zeal in my work. If you do so, 
they will come to you, men and women, who upon having news of my new coming will be interested in knowing my message, and anxiously you will ask, what was it that I taught you, and how I spoke in the third era to humanity? And that book that they are forming, The Golden Feathers, that inspiration that the spokesperson translates into words to be collected and jealously guarded in the pages of books, it will be the sacred inheritance that leaves everyone hungry for bread and everyone who seeks sustenance for their spirit. 25. Do not relegate those pages to the corner of your forgetfulness, because they will be weapons in the days of struggle, when still your lips do not know how to speak with due development, when your fragile memory forgets my lessons, those words printed, they will be speaking with the same essence with which I have taught you. The light of this teaching will penetrate the heart of those to whom you are witnessing, and they will tremble and believe in my manifestations as the Holy Spirit. 26. The moment of struggle will come for you, and you will see how the people will feel strong and courageous, fervent in their belief. To know if that time has arrived, you will not have to ask your brothers, but you will feel the call that your father makes to you. The prophets will be alert because their responsibility will not cease. Your spiritual pupils will penetrate with respect and love in that world, from which they will clearly see the signs that will lead the people to the good road, and also in this world there will be events that will tell you about that hour of fulfillment. 27. What do you want to know for those times that you have not managed to understand through this simple and clear word? What explains it and solves it all? Thus, with clarity you must teach, so that you may be true teachers and counselors of humanity. 28. The regions will see you as their stronghold. The prophets will be believed. Your balsamic, healthy words will be sought by the sick. Your advice will be requested, and your prayer and intercession also requested in the moments of testing. 29. What beautiful times for your fulfillment those will be. What a great opportunity for you to enjoy your spirit and develop your gifts. How much joy you will feel when you look at many who had lived uselessly. Strengthen yourselves in the good and get up doing profitable works, works of transcendence. That is your mission. Redeem and restore the likeness, the light that he had lost, to feel himself possessed of divine grace. All that was stripped will return to possess it, to be the owner of divine peace, wisdom, and love. 30. Your preparation for that time will not contain mysticism or human theories. You will not be ministers of rites or forms, but humble teachers who will penetrate the time of the events. 31. Understand that humanity is awakening to spiritual life, and very soon you will see great events that will reveal your advancement. You will see nations that were enemies for a long time unite and recognize each other. Many opposing races will merge. Doctrines that have no roots of spirituality and that have dominated peoples will be destroyed by those same peoples that before proclaimed them as saviors and new doctrines will emerge tending to the higher. I will allow them to establish themselves because they will be precursor movements of the purest spirituality. And when you see these works appear on earth, you will know that the spirit of men is ready to reach the end of another great stage. 32. Many who today are called wise will be broken and confused at that time. 
like others who have been persecuted and humiliated for their love of justice, they will see shine in those days of balance and restoration of morals, their desires, their healthy ideals. 33. Spiritual life will manifest itself fully on this planet and will make its influence felt in all beings, and those who have been materialistic will shut their lips close their books and open their spiritual eyes to contemplate that life that they had denied and they will open the doors that they had closed to the great multitudes. 34. You will see how my light shines throughout the world and how every spirit has been illuminated. The arcanum will be open and everything anyone who wants to look within can do so if they prepare with a little love. 35. When humanity knows my teaching and penetrates into its meaning, it will place its trust in it and affirm in the belief that it is the right path, the guide for all beings who want to live in justice, in love, and in respect for their fellow men. When this doctrine is established in the hearts of men, it will illuminate the life of the home, strengthening the parents in virtue, married couples in fidelity, children in obedience, and he will fill the teachers, and it will make rulers magnanimous and inspire judges to do true justice. The scientist will be enlightened, and this light will reveal great secrets for the good of humanity and for their spiritual evolution. Thus will begin a new era of peace and progress. 36. Spiritualism, as I have called this teaching, does not mean mysticism or fanaticism. This doctrine advises the simplification of worship and the purest elevation of the spirit. He leads you to that path, making you penetrate step by step on the path of truth. 37. How few have understood me and glimpsed the true essence of my teaching. I still see in my disciples the desire to persist in the traditions and customs of their ancestors, the fear of giving up many habits and rituals. They are an obstacle for the people to advance in their preparation. But I will help those little ones those weak spirits, so that they will be strengthened and reach the first disciples, because all of you must unite in a single purpose. 38. The mission of this people is to work for the peace of this world, preaching and sowing my word in its wake, so that this valley may be a reflection of the heavenly abode and its inhabitants, the image of the righteous who inhabit my kingdom. 39. To reach the goal in this world, you have to fight, to suffer and cry, but do not lose heart in your struggle. You go, stumbling over the imperfections and hardness of the human heart, but do not be judges of your brothers. Remember that in the second era, judgment did not appear among my disciples for any of their brothers. Only I corrected and judged the acts of those who followed me. And when someone, scandalized by what another had done, approached me to tell me, Lord, why did that brother fail? What will happen to him for this cause? What consequences will he find on his way? I answered, If he has failed, you do not make that mistake, nor do you expect punishment on him to feel that you are more perfect and more worthy of me. And even the day I celebrated the Last Supper with my disciples, and it was known to all the work of Judas, my presence imposed silence. No one judged him. No one called him unjust or traitor. No one claimed him or called him ungrateful. The silence was made because the disciples had already learned the lesson from their master, and it was only the consciousness of Judas 
that was the one who claimed and judged him. 40. So be ye at this time. Do not judge or sentence your brothers, however ignorant and mistaken you may look at them. Leave me your cause and fulfill as good disciples. Set an example that if you do with sincerity, devoid of vanity, you will find an echo in the hearts of they that surround you, and you will soon see them taking the same steps and obeying the same inspiration. 41. Watch and pray, people. Watch over your unification and your peace. You are already in the last days of this final year, and I want to find you united. I have been the lark under whose wings all the chicks have taken shelter. So I want to continue giving you heat so that you do not disintegrate. I have taught you a lot so that you, as first, know how to lead the last. Look that among them there are some who have not affirmed themselves, and it is necessary that you help them, and even among those who they have heard a lot, there are those who are fragile. To them repeat my words, give them warmth and life so that they do not stray from the walk, and watch with your works for the peace of this world. Pray and that prayer will illuminate the lives of your brothers. Your spirit, imitating the master, turned into a peace lark, will fly over the beam of the earth, carrying my message to all men of goodwill. 42. But do not expect the result of your sowing at the moment of depositing the seed. I have told you that the spiritual seed does not have the same term to germinate as that which you sow in your fields. If the material seed germinates in seven days, the spiritual can be born the same in seven seconds as in seven stages of eternity. You must sow and cultivate with love, and one day your spirit, which belongs to eternal life, will enjoy contemplating the germination of the seed you sowed, its growth, its flowering and fruiting, and not only this, but the multiplication of this fruit, of which only one seed you sowed. 43. This is how I teach you and explain to you what you do not understand. Strengthen yourselves every day because I want to look at you strong of spirit and healthy of body. 44. Anyone who feels weak or ill, be strengthened by my presence. Feel my comfort and get up in faith and confidence in your destiny. That same faith will be a staff to hold on and move on. If your ailments are prolonged, overcome them with that strength that I give you. If you look at the pain in your brothers and you want to put it aside, come to the source of consolation and very quickly that pain will turn it into peace and a smile. Look not death in where there is none, because I am life and all beings live in me. 45. When you want to pray for the beings that inhabit the spiritual valley, do not set the day or time to evoke them and approach these creatures. Do it for the love that unites you to them, and think that they belong to the spiritual life, that live in eternity and are not under the action of time. 46. Live in communion with that world, close to each other. Tighten your bonds of love, and if those beings to whom you were united on earth are more higher than you on the spiritual scale, they will help you in your life. If on the contrary they are delayed and they need your prayer and your support, the example you can give them, help them, and so you will be maintaining harmony and peace in this world. 47. 
do not show impatience to meet loved ones again. That impatience is from the human heart, who would like to perceive the shape of these beings, their faces and their attitude, to enjoy with them for a moment. Retain that impatience and wait with true spiritual virtue that the happy moment of that encounter arrives and then you will continue walking united along the same path that will take you all to my right hand. 48. Watch and pray for the beings of the hereafter, for those who need nothing from you, and your prayer will be a greeting, a kiss, a close spiritual embrace. And for those who need your help, your prayer will be a balm, a liberation, a caress and a voice of encouragement on the path of trials and restitution. Those spiritual beings who have not been able to rise to the abode that corresponds to them, to the world that they belong to and wait, upon receiving the voice of this world that attracts them with its prayer, they will awaken from their sleep, they will rise from their death and will pursue their salvation. 49. But humanity does not know how to illuminate the life of those beings or start their materialization. It does not know how to break the chains of regrets and pain weighing down on them. You who possess the light, pray and have charity of that world unknown to you and help it to free itself and to channel itself into the life to which it belongs, not to flee from their presence or fear them. I bring you closer so that, united, you may pray and come to me, so I will receive you to give you peace, which must be extended to cover all of you, because you are all my very beloved children. 50. My Divine Spirit embraces you and blesses you. Take my word so that you may be full of light, strength, and wisdom, and penetrate it so that you may know my will. I want you to be jealous of what you receive and to know how to analyze. 51. In my manifestations of love, you have felt that I give you life. You feel my warmth and my protection, and you stop being cold, to become beings full of faith and hope. 52. Each one of my words is a command, and I want you to get up in a hurry to fulfill them. My prophecies given through simple and humble creatures, they will be fulfilled and you will bear witness to this. 53. Because of my work, many of you will be judged badly, but do not take the cause. Leave it to me, and I will defend you. You only work to sow this light and be humble. When they attack you, use only the weapons that I have given you, love, respect, and humility. The more they blame you, the more I will manifest my power in you and those who have the gift of seeing beyond this life, in the regions of the spirit, strengthen the weak, confirming my words, and those who have the gift of rising to hear the voices from the hereafter, prepare yourselves to carry my messages. These higher manifestations will sustain your spirit, even in the greatest trials. 54. Your works are perpetually written. For this reason, you have been consecrated to my service. Use well your understanding and gift of speech. 55. I give you my teaching as a seed for you to sow and cultivate. When your prepared heart feels that the time has come to start your work, go. Share with all the hungry and the seed will multiply. Many will not know how to receive the good news because their spirit will not be in time to understand these lessons. Others, they will want to steal the precious fruit 
to misuse it, and then they will repent to come to me, like prodigal children. Moreover, I will return the seed to those who have lost it through ignorance, and every spirit of good will will possess it. 56. When you know how to find in my lesson all the light and strength that your spirit needs, you will follow me until the end. You will not feel tired. You will not stop in your task of making my word known, and the vicissitudes will not make you waver. When you have understood a lesson, analyze the next, and continue reading in the book of infinite lessons that I leave you for you to study and feed yourself. Take what you need to live. Live as my disciples. My peace be with you.